So as Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but as the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pandemics and earthquakes in diverse places all these things are but the beginning of sorrows then shall they deliver you up and be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many will grow cold but he that endures to the end the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world for a witness unto the nations unto all the nations and then the end shall come praise the lord and this is the word of the lord jesus because the disciples came to him privately and asked him saying how do we know when we reach the last days and jesus gave them prophecy Jesus gave detailed account of the spiritual state and condition of humanity in the last days. Many things were said here, but one of the things that Jesus said was that in the last days the love of many will grow cold. That's one of the signs that we're living in the last days. When the love of many grows cold. But I thank God that God sent Jesus. And Jesus Christ shed his blood for you and me on that cross. The blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you. It doesn't matter what community you come from or what culture you belong to. Or what language you speak or what continent you hail from. The blood of Jesus was shed for you. You could say that you're an atheist. You could say that you don't belong, that you don't believe that there's anything out there. But still, the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you. You could say that, oh, there's a lot of terrible things that have happened in the church. You know, and we see some of these things in the news. It doesn't mean that the blood of Jesus was not shed for you. Regardless of whatever happens in the church, the blood of Jesus was shed for you. Because when it comes to the day of judgment, you cannot stand before God and say, I did not become a Christian because of what was going on in the church. Because God has never asked you to believe in the church. God asked you to believe in his son Jesus. God asked you to believe in the holiness and the righteousness of Jesus. God has never called you to believe in the righteousness and the holiness of man. Jesus Christ never violated any of the Ten Commandments. Jesus has never sinned against the law of Moses. When Jesus was walking on the earth, he completed his life without ever violated, not even in the tiniest sense any of the laws of Moses so I speak the blood of Jesus Christ into the very foundations of the town of Odom because it is not the will of God that any should perish 
but that we should all come to the saving knowledge of who Jesus is. I plead the blood of Jesus into the very foundations of the town of Oldham for the forgiveness of sin, for getting right with God, for reconciliation with Him. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ on behalf of every soul in Oldham because if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the word of truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and also to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I speak the blood of Jesus into the atmosphere above all them, into the heavens above all them, the blood of Jesus Christ for the pulling down of principalities and powers for the pulling down of spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places, for the pulling down of the rulers of the darkness of this world, for the pulling down of thrones, dominions, for the pulling down of demonic hierarchies, in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus into the heart and soul of the people of Odom, because the hour is come that the dead should hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear the voice of the Son of God shall live again. If you are listening, if you can hear me, as you are walking past, I speak the blood of Jesus into your soul. I speak the blood of Jesus into your hearing. That is, you hear the gospel message, the message of the love of God, shown in the resurrection of Jesus. That is, you hear the message of God. You hear with the hearing of faith. For without faith it is impossible to please God. But whosoever comes to God must believe that he is and that God is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ into every house in order for the peace of God to rule and reign in every home in order. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, into every gate in order, physical gate and spiritual gate, for the triumphant entry of the entrance of the word of God into the hearts of the people of Odin. Because God's got nothing but love for you. God's got nothing but love for you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus Christ might be saved. So he that believes is not condemned, but he that believes not in the name of the only begotten Son of God is condemned already. Because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. God never sent anyone to hell. People send themselves to hell when they tell they are back on the eternal life that God gives us in Jesus Christ. Now you might say to me, but why Jesus? Why not any of these other religious leaders? Why not any of these other people who've come into our history claiming that they were coming from God, claiming that God spoke to them and gave them a message? You know why it's Jesus and Jesus alone? Because of all those people who've come into our history, only one man God raised from the dead, and that man is Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is God's stamp of approval on Jesus to show you that Jesus is the one sent from God. If you are sent from God, you should be able to go to God and come back. If you are sent from God, you should be able to exist uh, in both worlds. So Jesus did that. They crucified him. They buried him for three days. But on the third day, Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead was actually your resurrection from the dead. Your relationship with God died in the scene of Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's when your relationship died with Adam together with him. It's like if you have rich parents 
wealthy parents and then all of a sudden the parents lose all of their wealth just before you were born even though your parents were rich but because they lost all their fortune but because they've lost all their wealth but because they've lost all their riches you are also born in poverty if your parents if they were once rich and they find themselves poor by the time you were born you are born into that same family you were born into that family and that's what happened with humanity Adam and Eve were once rich God gave them the world they were supposed to have the world under their feet with the Garden of Eden as their headquarters with the Garden of Eden as parliament they were supposed to rule the earth they had everything so when Adam and Eve were rich and had everything you also were rich and had everything the idea was to produce or reproduce a humanity that resembles who God is and you and I know that God is the owner of everything you and I know that the world belongs to God the universe belongs to God because it's God who made everything so Adam and Eve were given the earth and they were supposed to rule the earth they were supposed to enjoy the riches and the wealth that are in the earth but what do you see today you see wealth concentrated in a handful of people while the rest of the people are wallowing in poverty while the rest of the people are wallowing in abject poverty but that's not what God meant for humanity when God created Adam and Eve they were rich and we were in Adam and Eve so we were created rich at all but today some people actually believe that they were meant for poverty but let me tell you you were never meant for poverty you were never meant to live a life of lack you were never meant to live a life of begging for a morsel of bread you were never meant for that because when God made Adam and Eve he created them and gave them the world literally the diamonds in the world the gold thank you amen thank you, thank you. all the gold in the world was given to you all the diamonds in the world was given to you all the riches in the world god wanted you to have them and god still wants you to have them because when god made adam and eve he never made a poor adam and eve he never made an adam and eve that was skinned when god made adam and eve adam and eve were rich they had the world because the word of God clearly states that God said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion on the earth as we have dominion in heaven so it is not the will of God that people should live in poverty but what do we see today we see a few people grabbing all the wealth of the world to themselves and the rest of the people struggling in poverty struggling in lack having to work ourselves to the ground just for a morsel of bread but i'm so glad that jesus christ is returning to take over the governments of the world and jesus will rule on this earth for a thousand years there will not be any corruption when jesus comes to rule there will not be any unfairness or any injustices when Jesus comes to rule. And Jesus will come to rule for a thousand years and show us what true leadership really means. Not the kind of leadership that we see today where they grab money, where they grab all the wealth to themselves and leave the rest of the people to suffer in poverty. Jesus will return to rule for a millennium jesus will come to rule for a thousand years 
and he's going to remove all these injustices. He's going to remove all, all these corrupted leaders, all this corruption, Jesus will deal with it. And at that time, we will know what true leadership means. At that time, we're going to know what it means to be under true government. The government and leadership and rulership are uh, exactly as God intended it. So I tell you that you were never meant for poverty. You were never meant for lack because when God made you, he made you in his image. He put you in the Garden of Eden. And in the Garden of Eden, in Adam and Eve, we had everything. We had everything. Shake your head as you may, but the word of God is true. There are 2.3 billion Christians in the world today. What does that tell you about the word of God? The Bible is the most read and is the most distributed book in the history of the world. What does that tell you about the word of God? So you know that the word of God is true. You know the word of God will never fall to the ground. Everything that Jesus said came to pass. Everything that Jesus said is coming to pass as we speak. And everything that Jesus said will come to pass. So what happened then? Why do we have some people living in poverty? Why do we have... Because, because of the government. You're asking, so why do we have poverty then? Why do we have a couple of people gathering all the wealth to themselves and the rest of the people suffering and struggling day by day? Why is it like that today then? The answer is found in the same Bible. God says to Adam and Eve, everything in the Garden of Eden you're free to eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the day you eat of it, you will surely die. That's what God said. So what did Adam and Eve go and do? They go and eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and sin came into the world and death by sin. This is how it works. When Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you and I ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When sin came into Adam because of that, because of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, sin also came into you and me and death followed sin. When God confronted Adam and Eve, about this, about this, the, the, what they did, the eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and Adam and Eve refused to repent because when you read your Bible, the Bible tells you that Adam was blaming the missus and the missus was blaming the snake. They refused to repent. They refused to acknowledge that they had made a mistake, that they had sinned, that they had erred. And this is the reason why people today refuse to acknowledge their sin. This is why it takes us a lot to come before God and say, Father, I have sinned. I know I've not lived, I've not lived right. I've not lived up to your standard of living. I need to repair my relationship with you. I need to make amends in Jesus' name. This is why it takes people ages to come to the cross of Christ because we inherited that thing there of refusing to repent from Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve refused to repent, you also refused to repent. When God kicked Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, you were also sent out of the Garden of Eden. So this is why we have a humanity that is born outside the presence of God. And I get people come to me all the time and say, listen, I pray all the time, but I don't think my prayers are reaching God. You know, I don't think I hear God. I don't think my heart is connecting with God. How can I feel Him? How can I get in touch with Him? How can I get up close and personal with this God? The answer is this. When Adam and Eve sinned against God in the Garden of Eden, they died a spiritual death. You are three in one because God is three in one. God made you in his image. God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. With your spirit, you are supposed to be aware of God. With your soul, you are supposed to be self-conscious. And with your body, you are supposed to be of the aware of the world around you. So when humanity sinned against God, their relationship with God died because the spiritual man died. And the only way you can begin to feel God again is if you're born again. If you really want to hear the voice of God, get born again. If you really want to connect with God in your heart, get born again. If you really want to know what God has for you, get born again. Because I get people come to me all the time asking the same questions like, how are you?
If you really want to feel God, get born again. If you really want to hear the word of God in your heart, get born again. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus Christ also said, Whosoever shall deny me before men, I will deny them before my Father which is in heaven. And whosoever shall confess me before men, I will confess them before my Father which is in heaven. If you're not in touch with heaven on earth, don't expect to be in heaven when you die. If you're not keeping in touch with heaven on earth, don't expect to be in heaven in the afterlife. If you're not in the house of God on earth, don't expect to be in the house of God in heaven. And I, it's so sad. Because even when a person lives like, a, like the devil, the day they die, they're putting rest in peace on Facebook. They're putting rest in peace wherever the person dies. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter how many rest in peace cards or flowers they leave on your grave. If you die without Jesus, you're condemning yourself to hell. Regardless of how many rest in peace cards they leave on your grave. There is no repentance on the other side of the grave. If you are getting right with God, get right with God in this life. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And why do we have to listen to Jesus? Because Jesus died and rose again. Jesus has been to the afterlife and back. Jesus defeated the power of the grave. Jesus totally annihilated the power of death. And when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he shares with you his righteousness. The word of God tells us that as Jesus was on the cross, God was in Jesus Christ reconciling the world to himself. That's what the word of God tells us. The word of God tells us that as Jesus was hanging on the cross, that was Satan's defeat. And the devil didn't even see it coming. The devil didn't even see it coming because as soon as Jesus Christ went up on that cross, the first thing that Jesus said was, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And the reason why Jesus prayed that prayer is because the power that the devil has over humanity is the guilt of sin and the fear of death and the fear of hell. That's Satan's advantage over you. But when you come to the cross of Jesus Christ, when you are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, when your sins are forgiven at the cross of Jesus Christ, the devil's got nothing on you. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross to pay the price for your sin and reconcile you back to God, you will be saved. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, your relationship with God, that relationship which died in the Garden of Eden, God brings that relationship back to life. I feel God in my heart. I hear God speak to my soul. I hear God speak to me in my heart. I open the word of God and read it. And God is speaking to me from his word. God gives me guidance and comfort. God strengthens my heart and my soul. You know why? Because I am born again. Because I have a relationship with God through what Jesus did on the cross. And the very same Holy Spirit by whom Jesus was risen from the dead, God is saying to you that that same Holy Spirit is available to you today. So I speak the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Christ into every household in Oldham for the peace of God to rule and reign in every house in Oldham. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ into the heart and soul of the people of Oldham for the peace of God to rule in the hearts of the people of Oldham. I speak the blood of Jesus to the very gates of Oldham for the triumphant entry of the word of God into the hearts of the people of Oldham in Jesus' mighty name. I speak the blood of Jesus to the very gates of Oldham for the triumphant entry of the word of God into the hearts of the people of Oldham. I place the blood of Jesus at the center of Oldham, both the physical center and the spiritual center. I place the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. And may the Lord bless the people of Oldham. In Jesus' name.
Amen and amen. Praise the Lord.